Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. We're back with you for another Victory Friday in the A. I'm Kelly Price, joined as always by former Falcons wide receiver Harry Douglas. Braves are in the World Series. The Falcons are at 500, riding a little bit of a winning streak here. It's a good time to be an Atlanta sports fan, Harry. We're going to have a funky good time. Hey, hey, we're going to have a funky good time. We got to take you high. <laughs> yeah. Hey! We missed hey. the Harry Douglas bars last week. We missed that. Nah. <laughs> the Falcons got it done late in the game again on Sunday from standout special teams plays to the defense picking Tua Tagovailoa off twice. It was the kind of complimentary football that I think Arthur Smith has really been trying to get out of this team, Harry. Yeah, that's what you want to play. You want to play uh, complimentary football. Shout out to the field goal block team actually getting that block field goal, which paid dividends in the end because the Falcons won by a field goal. And shout out to the defense. I understand they haven't been great, but they've been good at moments when the when this team actually had needed them to do. Jalen Hawkins got his second interception back-to-back -back games, which that paid dividends because the Falcons went in right before halftime and scored. So shout out to the defense. Boya Lukin as well getting the interception right after the Falcons had a, a turnover. But Atlanta doesn't win that game without Matt Ryan, who turned on the Matty Ice mode on Sunday. Over 300 passing yards and two touchdowns. Plus, some more history. Ryan mounted his 32nd fourth quarter comeback, eclipsing John Elway in that category. After the game, Arthur Smith said, quote, I personally think he's criminally underrated, unquote. And it's funny, I feel like I'm seeing less and less of Matt Ryan haters online these days, Harry. Yeah, it's funny, but... Kelly, I've been a part of a lot of those comebacks, being able to come in with Matt Ryan in 2008. He's done it year in and year out. It's, it's, I think it's just amazing. You've seen with 20, uh, 36 seconds left on the clock right before the halftime, he went down and propelled his team to get a field goal. You've seen with just over three minutes left in the ball game, the same situation. What did he do? He went to the Unicorn Cow Pitts, went down, Young Wei Ku won the football game for this team. So shout out to Matt Ryan for doing his thing in two minute and game winning situations. And speaking of icy, this man's veins run ice cold as well. Young Wei Ku does it again. He wins another game winner for the Falcons with a 36 yard field goal. And at this point, I feel I feel like Falcons fans aren't even that nervous when he takes the field in these moments because he's really been automatic. Kelly, I'm not nervous when Young Wei Koo takes the field. And I tell you, if if I'll say if consistency had a pitcher in the dictionary, Young Wei Koo's pitcher would be right there <laughs> beside it because that's all he's been. He's been Mr. Consistent. He's 10 for 10 this year. And every time he tries out on that football field, I don't care what the distance is. I have faith. And Young Wei who I said Koo. <laughs> Love it. Ku may have iced the game, but the Falcons kept it icy with their pregame fits this week as well. Let's take a look in this week's Falcons fits. First and foremost, the Falcons have a first timer here in Falcons fits who absolutely brought the drip. Deron Harmon in the 305. He is a vet on the field. It shows with this blue window pane suit. He ate and left no crumbs, Harry. My goodness. Boy, them boys go down to Miami. They don't know how to act, Kelly. Listen, he is casket sharp. And not only is he casket sharp, that milk dud up top is shining too. I see you, Deron. <laughs> and Grady Jarrett got the down to business memo as well. This fresh gray suit really brought to life with the red and red tie and red sneakers. 10 out of 10 color coordination. If there was a Pro Bowl for NFL fashion, our guy Grady would be a perennial pick there too. I don't know if GQ is noticing, but if it's one person they need to feature, it needs to be the big man, Grady Jarrett. Week in, week out, even when he's not playing the game of football, Kelly, we see him on his Instagram. We see him on his social media, stunting. He the always clothing. be flexing on that gram. And speaking of some top-notch color coordination, staying on the D-line, Marlon Davidson giving some summer vibes in October. But hey, it's Miami. It's like 100 degrees there, so it works. The denim shirt, white jeans, and baby blue Nikes are all really fresh together, Harry. Now, let me tell you what's funny about this one. A lot of people tell you after Labor Day, you're not allowed to wear white. But Kelly, when you're a millionaire, when you're a millionaire, you can wear white pants, white shoes, white anything, whatever you want to. Plus, I love the big man Matt and, and trying to style and profile. Hey, go out there and ball, big boy. I see you, man. Well, last but certainly not least, Corderell Patterson, whose fit kind of took me a second. I wasn't sure if I liked it at first, but the more I look at it, the more I really do like it. Keeping neutral with some basics, but dressing that up with a plaid vest and the flash ice, always a nice touch. The flash necklace, that's exactly what he is, a flash, because defenses can't catch him, they can't tackle him, they can't guard him. All he has done is made plays and flash here, flash there. Man, the man been flashing everywhere. <laughs> Kelly, back to you. <laughs> it's spooky season with Halloween this weekend, so we asked the Falcons, what creep 
creeps them out and what some of their biggest phobias are in this week's Question of the Week. I would have to say snakes. I, I am terrified of snakes. I'm afraid of spiders, like little bitty spiders. I'm 6'4", 300 pounds. I'm scared of a spider. Can't stand a day yet. Worms. I do not like worms. And it's crazy. We had, I was throwing a football with my son yesterday. And we seen a few, and I, you know, telling my son, like, yeah, don't worry about the worm, don't worry about it. And then I felt one, like, literally, like, next to me. And it was, like, on my foot. And I screamed like a little girl. <laughs> rats. Hate rats. They're scary. Rats. <laughs> Anything that flies. Butterflies. I hate butterflies. <laughs> Hate them. I hate butterflies. Just bugs in general. Don't like bugs at all. Like anything that just moves around, yeah, just bugs in general. Like, you know, there's a lot of spiders that come to this training camp, so it's terrible. I see the ants that get that big here. It doesn't make no sense. Ants in California are a lot big and they're black. These ones are like that big. I seen a flying ant. I didn't know they could do that. I get had wings on it and it was flying around. So it seems like the bigger the falcon, the smaller the thing they're afraid of. <laughs> so I would say one of my biggest fears isn't flying necessarily, but whenever there's like some turbulence on an airplane, I'll start saying prayers every time. I know it's probably fine, but it just scares the heck out of me. Not too afraid of butterflies or worms or anything though. What about you, Harry? Well, for me, I agree with you though, but the flying, I, every time I get on a plane, I try to go to sleep before we actually take off. But for me, it's scary movies because every time I used to watch scary movies, it seems like Kelly, I used to have nightmares. I wake up in my sleep sweating. I wake up in my sleep wet. So I, I didn't like that. So you know, the best thing for me to do is just stay away from it all and don't watch scary movies. Yeah, I agree with you there. Horror, thrillers, not exactly my thing, but there is one that is my thing. Speaking of those thrillers, one of the stars of the Netflix hit show Stranger Things, which is one of my favorite shows, an Atlanta native Priya Ferguson joins us later here on Rise Up Tonight. Plus, we've seen one-handed catches from the man they call the unicorn. Yes, the unicorn. How exactly does he do that? I'll explain that next on Rise Up Tonight. We got you covered with more Falcons news and nuggets, including a trip over to Harry's film room. Rise Up Tonight will be right back. What's up, ATL? This is Ted Craig. Let's rejoin my favorite co-host, Kelly and Harry, for more Rise Up Tonight on your home for Falcons football. Fox 5 Atlanta. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight for this week's breakdown of Harry's film room. In the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons held the fourth overall pick. With that selection, they chose a difference maker. Yeah, the unicorn himself out of Florida. Fast forward to now, he's making a lot of plays and making a lot of people happy, dominating NFL defenses. Let's take a look at how special this talent really is. Now right here, since the second quarter, 36 seconds left in the second, right after the Falcons defense gave them an interception to get this football back. Now Matt Ryan sent this guy in motion to, to understand what the coverage is gonna be. So right now, I see man coverage. He has him, he has him, this guy has him. This safety's gonna come down and take the back. Right now, this is Kyle Pitts up top with safety Eric Rowe. And he's saying, damn, my coach didn't put me in the worst situation possible. So as we let this play play out, we're gonna see what transpires. Ball gets snapped. Kyle Pitts does a great job on this release. He's winning one-on-one. -on -one. If he's even, he's leaving. Now, at this point right here, Eric Rowe understood that Kyle Pitts was drafted number four overall in the NFL draft for a reason. Right here, Eric Rowe understands that Kyle Pitts is a better football player than he is defensively. Now, as we let it transpire, go ahead. Look at the sideline. Look at everybody. Look at the young phenom. Look at him. Look at him. That's why the Falcons chose him number four overall. It's not by mistake. He's a difference maker, he's a game breaker, and he's changing the game. Kelly, back to you. Harry, I don't know if I've ever seen you get so excited for a film room. I love it. Well, it's another division game this week for the Falcons with the Panthers coming to town. Falcons insider Dave Archer breaks down more on how the ground game is going to be key in his keys to the game. 
Panthers, Falcons, this weekend at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, let's look at the keys to the game. Run game will be the operative word. Let's look at this Falcon offense versus a very good Carolina defense. In fact, they're number three in the league in total defense, giving up just under 290 yards per game, and they have 18 sacks. Hassan Reddick, Brian Burns, guys coming after the passer, where they've struggled a little bit is recently against the run. In fact, they've given up over 100 yards in three of the last four weeks. They gave up 245 to Dallas and got pushed around for almost 200 yards by the Minnesota Vikings. Run the football, there's your key. Get after them physically, then you get those flats and shots over the top. I think you control the football game. On the other side, Atlanta has not handled the run very well either. And last week against Miami, 125 yards plus rushing. You've got to take away the run game. They've played two different quarterbacks. Make one of those two quarterbacks make plays, or both of them make plays, but Chuba Hubbard is the featured runner. Christian McCaffrey is out. If you take care of the run game, run it and stop it, you've got a chance to be a winner for the fourth time in five weeks. Well, still to come here on Rise Up tonight, how the entire team gave back on their day off this week. That story coming up later in the show. And coming up next, we're going to nest with Priya Ferguson, a.k.a. Erica from Stranger Things. That's next on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing, and by Truist, committed to a better future. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Tonight, we're joined in the nest by Priya Ferguson. You might know her as Erica from Stranger Things. She's also an Atlanta native. We're uh, keeping with the spooky theme here with uh, Stranger Things this Halloween week. Do you have any plans for Halloween? Do you have a costume planned? Um, actually, my schedule has been so packed lately. I haven't asked, actually sat down with my friends and made arrangements, but we have talked about things we would like to do for Halloween and as for a costume, I haven't really had time to go out and buy one and actually plan one this year. Hopefully next year though, but um, I think I might just go to a friend house or a friend might come over my house and we might watch some scary movies, binge watch, you know, scary movies and chill and eat candy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I can definitely relate because I haven't even got my costume yet and I have two kids and the clock is really ticking for me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but being from Atlanta right now, it's, a, it's an exciting time uh, for this city when it comes to sports. How much do you get to actually watch the Falcons since you're filming right now? Um, you know, I haven't really had that much time to actually watch it because I have, you know, been packed. But I did see a little bit of the Falcons and the Eagles game, so that was really exciting. Um, and I'm hopefully, and I'm hoping to see the upcoming game. So you're from Atlanta. What is it like to tape, you know, these these movies and whatnot in the city that you're from? I definitely think it's cool being a native from Atlanta and Atlanta is just really a hospitality city. It's very warming, we're very welcoming here. Um, and I think it's good to film a lot of black movies here because we're such a, we move in such a um, positive way when it comes down to black people and you really see African Americans doing anything anywhere in Atlanta. So I think that's really cool. And also it's my home. So I have a phobia of hotels. So it's really cool because I get to still go to school. And after I'm done filming, I get to go home to my bed. <laughs> being here in Atlanta, being from Atlanta, when you, you know, go around on some of your free time, do, do people recognize you? You know, I get recognized unexpectedly. I get recognized unexpectedly, like when I'm not noticing it. But I think more people recognize me when I talk because my voice is very distinctive, not because of how I look. I think they might think, oh, she looks familiar, but I can't tell because I look, I always change my hair. I always change my look. Um, so I look a little bit different than Erica. So I think when I talk, they're like, that's that girl from Stranger Things. I've heard her voice before, so. Erica was kind of like a smaller role at first, but she became such a bigger role. I think in credit to you and what, how you kind of brought that character to life. What was that like to, to really see that character grow? 
I think it was really, really cool, especially in the upcoming season. I think you guys will learn a lot more about Erica and a lot more about her relationship with the other cast members. So that's really cool as well. And, you know, Erica was seen as like, you know, to other, some perspectives, like a brat and a little sister that nags. But I think in season three, you actually learn how smart she is. And she actually understands that she is a nerd too. So everyone comes to that realization. All right, now, what has it been like for you as a member of this cast as the show was first blowing up and now winning awards? I think it's really cool. I'm happy for the show. You know, me and the cast, we all have a great bond, and I'm happy at what this show has became because even when I first watched it, I was like, wow, this seems like a very show, cool show to be on, and now it's like national so everyone's watching it. it's a national show it's international so i think every, it's a really cool show to be on and even you know with the awards and the categories of it i think it's really cool and it's a blessing to everyone and me very cool have you seen that this role this erica role has really springboarded you into a lot of other opportunities yes yes it has and a lot of other opportunities where people can see my range too so that's a huge blessing as well. That's awesome. Well, she is Priya Ferguson, and we are on Rise Up tonight. Head to fox5atlanta.com to see the rest of this conversation for all you Stranger Things fans out there. And we'll be right back on Rise Up tonight. Hey, Atlanta, this is Head Crack talking, and you're watching Rise Up Tonight, presented by AT&T. Hey Crack here, Rise Up Tonight has been presented to you by AT&T. For the 14th straight year, the entire Atlanta Falcons roster got out in the community for their annual hometown huddle, giving back as a team on their day off on Tuesday as we Rise Up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. Falcons players and volunteers from Cigna participated in a park cleanup project at Maddox Park on Atlanta's west side. The team split into three different shifts and painted park signs, weeded and mulch it, mulched some landscaping beds, cleared park walkways, planted some flowers, and much more. Mike Davis actually has memories of going to this park growing up, has played football here, and attended many a family cookout here, so he's happy to give back. I think it shows that we care about the community, we care about the people in Atlanta, and um, the fact that, like you said, we, we do have busy schedules, but we take the time out of our day to come out and, you know, to help in the community, help in the parks. And um, I think it, it, it speaks volumes that we have legit everybody on the roster come out here and help. So we're here for the city. We're just kind of restoring this place a little bit, you know, planting some plants, giving it a little bit of life, um, just showing that we care about the Atlanta community. You know, it's a great opportunity for us to come out here today on our off day and give back. Um, like we said, I just want to kind of liven this place up a little bit and put our own little touch on it. Someone else who's making an impact in his community, Riverdale head coach Rodney Hackney, who was our Atlanta Falcons coach of the week, presented by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Coach Hackney came came over and took over a team that was one and nine and immediately changed the culture of the program, going seven and four in both of his first two years and qualifying for state. In 2020, Hackney led the Raiders to an eight and three record region championship in third round of the state playoffs. Currently, the Raiders are 6-0 oh and one an undefeated start for the first time since 1998. Well, Harry, the Panthers started the season 3-0, but have really fallen off in the last few weeks, losing four straight, even benching Sam Darnold in their loss to the Giants on Sunday. How can the Falcons take advantage of that situation when the Panthers come into Mercedes-Benz this weekend? Well, Kelly, for me, it's simple, right? The Falcons play the Panthers on Halloween, so it makes the game even better. Why? Let me tell you why. Sam Darnold used to see Ghost when he was in New York, so why not make him see Ghost again? <laughs> on Sunday in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Now, the Falcons, I think they have to get pressure on Sam Darnold. He's not the same guy that started the, the season off the first three games. The last four games, he has seven interceptions and two uh, touchdowns. But part of the problem is not just Sam Darnold. It's that offensive line in Carolina. Right now, they've given up 21 sacks in the NFL. That is second, tied for second in the NFL right now amongst all the NFL teams. So, get pressure on Sam Darnold. Allow him to see ghosts on Halloween so it makes sense. <laughs> Pick the ball off, get the ball to your offense. Falcons go down to score. Falcons win. I love it. Well, thanks for staying up late with us here on Rise Up tonight. I know it was a late night after the World Series here on Fox 5. For Harry Douglas, I'm Kelly Price. We'll see you right back here next Friday night.